Now, there's things that when they come to your attention, you know that it has to be true because you can't make this stuff up. So we, our detectives come in to brief me and the chiefs and said, we've got information that one of our volunteer sheriff service officers, one of our volunteers, is selling oxycodone. We go, well, that's a shock. Out of the sheriff's patrol car that he's issued to drive while he volunteers, that's another shock. So we begin an undercover investigation, and we find out a volunteer sheriff's service officers are volunteers. They're the ones that, with the yellow lights on the car, and they help direct traffic at crashes. They work minor crashes. They look for handicap violations. They help with school crossings. And what we find is David Roberts. <clears throat> He's 69 years old. He's been a volunteer for us for 12 years, a very good volunteer. People say that he's friendly, he's fun to be around, he's hardworking. And here's what we have discovered so far during this investigation. He gets about 90 oxy, not about, he gets 90 oxycodone with Tylenol a month for pain. And he's gotten these for over two years. Now, I've got all kinds of other questions, like what doctor thinks he needs 90 oxys a month for over two years? But when he gets these 90 oxys, his pain's not that great. So he sells them. He sells them for $10 each. Well, we infiltrate him with an undercover detective, and we find out that he's being paid $10 a piece for these. So he's making $900 a month selling his prescription drugs on the street. So now we're in competition with the street drug dealers. So we said, we'll give you $12. And he goes, OK. So he says, I'll set the location for the transaction. So we go, okay, and it's the racetrack, Highway 60 in Lake Wells. So our undercover pulls into the racetrack, dials the suspect up on the phone and said, hey man, I'm looking for you, where are you? He said, I'm over here in the corner. Our undercover says, you're in the popo car? He goes, yeah. He won't be in it for long, but he's in it now. So we go there. He has taken the oxys out of the prescription bottle, put them in a plastic baggie, and is counting the money before he turns the drugs over to us. Why he's wearing his uniform. Listen, folks, that makes me crazy. That makes me so crazy, I want to pluck my eyeballs out one at a time. So we complete the deal. We allow him to drive away. We follow him. And he pulls into the substation. So we arrest him in the parking lot of the substation. And he's affable. And he's cooperative. And he signs a waiver and lets us search his house where we find some marijuana. He says, it's not mine, it's my nephew's. I'm just holding it for him. Well, why is it in your bedroom? I don't know, I'm just holding it for him. And then we find two guns, a rifle and a pistol. Well, that's okay, until we run a criminal history. Are you ready for this? 
you're talking about an epic system failure. He's a convicted felon from 52 years ago. That's right. When he was 19, he was arrested for a burglary and convicted. He goes, I can't be a convicted felon. I've been voting all the way back to Nixon. Did you hear what I said? So we have done an administrative look at our volunteer files, and they just missed it. They just flat missed it. Volunteers don't go through the normal HR detailed polygraph system that full-time employees do. They're donating time. But there's to be a complete background run on him. And 12 years ago, of course, the person that did it is long gone. Apparently, either didn't do it, didn't do it completely, had a failure. We're embarrassed. We're embarrassed. Mr. David Roberts, though, should recognize that selling 90 oxycodones is a 15-year minimum mandatory, and we're going to help him get every day of that in prison. He admitted, well, I've embarrassed the agency. That's the understatement of the day. But as is our policy at the sheriff's office, transparency. Somebody messed up 12 years ago on a background. He's been a stellar volunteer, very well loved, by, done a good job. Oh, except when he's selling oxys. Out of the car, you see, using it as cover. I am livid. I am hotter than a bare butt on a tin roof in August. And there will be all our volunteer systems audited. Oh, by the way, we don't have that many VSSOs. We've already checked all the other files and re-audited them. They're all pristine except for this one. All of them. Well, it makes sense. This is the one that should have been screened out 12 years ago and wasn't. So in Polk County vernacular, if there's been any misunderstanding, I'm pissed. He's going to prison, I hope, for 15 years, not counting his weapons charges. Is there any questions? There are background checks. There are complete background checks. Volunteers go through a much greater background check than employees in the private world. And had this, had this background check been done appropriately 12 years ago, he wouldn't be here. It wasn't done appropriately. It slipped through the process. We have over 3,000 volunteers at the Sheriff's Office. We are grateful for our volunteers and we love them. They do so much good work and value added for the community. And this guy's embarrassed every one of them with his nonsense. But he's going to pay. He's going to pay a significant price upon conviction in the criminal justice system, and he has already. He's sitting in the county jail right now. He doesn't need to worry about ever driving our car again. He doesn't need to worry about eating peanut butter and jelly in the jail. And, but he does, does need to know that, hey, at 69 years of age, man, eh, by the time trial's over with, You'll probably be out of prison by the time you're 84. Did he say how long he was doing that in the prison? First time. Oh. First time. 
although we have evidence to the contrary, he's been selling his oxys every month. But I've got lots of questions outside of this. What physician gives you 90 oxys a month for years? Because you have pain. I, I mean, this guy, I'm not suggesting there isn't demonstrable pain in some people that go on generationally. He ain't one of them. He comes to work. He told someone, I got gout in my big toe. Well, you know, he's given me pain too, but I'm not going to get any oxys for it.